Hi, physiology students. Welcome to the chapter one lecture. Um, you'll notice that these lectures will be much shorter uh, than what I would be doing if I was in person because this is an online class. Um, I'm really going to expect you guys to do a lot of the learning of the material on your own. However, I'm not leaving you out to dry. I'm still going to teach you the material, um, but just the lectures I found that no one wants to listen to a 90 minute lecture. Um, so these lectures will be much shorter than what they would be and hopefully you'll get something out of it if it's a little shorter and I don't lose you halfway through. Um, so what is physiology? So you've taken anatomy, but physiology now is the study of biological function and how the body works. It's concerned with the normal function of cells. It emphasizes mechanisms. So we'll be looking at a lot of the cause and effects now. Physiology is usually a lot more complicated because you're not just memorizing anatomical structures and bones and muscles and parts of the nervous system, but now you're learning how everything works. So it's a little more complex. Pathophysiology has to do with disease and comparative physiology looks at the differences and similarities um, between invertebrates and vertebrates. The scientific method, I'm gonna let you guys read through this because hopefully by now in your science courses, you have a good understanding of what the scientific method is. You should know what the scientific method is. It's extremely important in science, in the medical field. Um, it requires good physiological research, which requires quantifiable measurements, so things you can count and number and measure, an experimental group and a control group, statistical analysis, and review and publication by peer-reviewed journal. Uh, developing pharmaceuticals um, is basic research for developing a drug takes years before a drug is ever given to a person. Um, so which means getting a vaccine for COVID is a little scary because it probably should take a little longer than a couple months. Um, research begins by studying the effects of the chemical on cells in vitro, and then the studies will be done on animals to see if the same effects will occur on animals. Um, animal trials could take several years and eventually phases of clinical trials um, would then move on to human volunteers to test for side effects, rates of passage and dosage. So I'll let you guys read through kind of these phases, but basically it takes a long time to develop a drug um, and even get to volunteers being willing to try it out. Homeostasis and feedback control really has to do um, with your first lab, but we start with a brief history of physiology I'm only gonna talk about Aristotle. He was a Greek, 384 to 322 BC. He speculated about body function um, that were thinkers, not just doers. And there's a couple of other um, individuals there who helped talk about physiology and specifically Walter Cannon coined the term homeostasis. And that's the big thing about physiology. It's basically your body's mechanisms to just maintain homeostasis which is the internal consistency of the body. Um, so homeostasis is the constancy of the internal environment. It means the main purpose of all our physiological mechanisms that we'll talk about is to maintain homeostasis. Any deviation from homeostasis that can't be corrected by normal body functions will usually indicate a disease and negative food feedback loops will help to um, bring um, homeostasis back to normal. You should understand the pathway of homeostasis. Um, I'm going to point you to the lab lecture because I actually go through these negative feedback loops pretty, um, pretty well in the lab lecture if you're confused at all about them. So take a look at the lab um, to, well, as we talk more about homeostasis. Positive feedback is where the end product and the process stimulates the process. So positive feedback reinforces the change. Um, the action will amplify the change until some sort of end is reached. Um, positive feedback could not work alone, but it does contribute to many negative feedback loops. For example, if a blood vessel is damaged, a process is begun to form a clot. And once the damage is fixed, clotting will end. However, the process of actually forming that clot involves positive feedback. Um, a big one that's usually told about positive feedback example is the strength of uterine contractions during childbirth will continue until birth, the baby comes out. So that's a great example of positive feedback. Uh, regulation can occur intrinsically and extrinsically. 
The nervous system innervates organs and the endocrine system releases hormones in the blood. And I talk about these in the lab a little bit. We'll also talk about hormone regulation a lot when we get to the endocrine system. Um, and we'll talk a lot about blood glucose levels and what happens in your endocrine system to lower blood glucose levels or increase blood glucose levels. And if you know anyone who's diabetic, you can probably relate to the difficulties of that. The primary tissues, um, we talk about the levels of organization, which you should be familiar with, starting from a cell leading on to a tissue, into an organ, a system, which we have 11 organ systems, to an organism. And hopefully some of this is a review from anatomy. Our organs have, are composed of these four major tissue types. Um, and if you, this isn't a review, and I would encourage you to review your anatomy notes. And each tissue has a particular structure. Uh, the three types of muscle tissue are skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. And these slides take you through a review of skeletal muscle tissue. Um, you can see what it looks like there. Cardiac muscle tissue. And a picture of it there and smooth muscle tissue, and it'll give you that picture. So that's the review from anatomy, but please know that also for this chapter. Nerve tissue is found in the brain, spinal cord, and nerves, and neurons are made of dendrites, axons, and cell body. Uh, neuroglial are supporting cells, and this is a great picture of nerve tissue um, showing the dendrites, cell body, and axon. Epithelial tissue then is probably one that you remember from anatomy is it being extremely broad. Um, epithelial membranes are classified the number of layers being simple has one layer and stratify has several layers of cells. Epithelial tissues are also classified by their shape. Some modifications can occur in that some columnar tissues have goblet cells, some secrete mucus and cilia move in a coordinated fashion. And this is a great graph of epithelial tissue. You should know this. It's a review from anatomy. I won't go over it again here, but I'll let you guys look through the types of epithelial tissue. Feel free to pause this PowerPoint, this lecture at any time. And also um, the PowerPoint is on your modules as well. Then connective tissue is kind of the final type of tissue. It's the most broad and diverse because it includes bone, blood, cartilage, connective tissue proper can be loose or dense. And loose is kind of the body's packing material and dense includes tendons and ligaments. And I'll let you guys look through these slides as a good review. Adipose tissue, just fat. Cartilage, the cells are called chondrocytes. And then bone and teeth is also a part of connective tissue. That's a pretty cool picture of a tooth. Organs and systems then. Um, so an organ is composed of two or more tissues. The skin is the largest organ. It's made up of those primary tissue layers. Stem cells and tissue development, they arise from three embryonic germ layers, the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. Type of stem cells, continued, I'll let you guys read through that. Stem cells in the bulge of a hair follicle. Systems then, humans have 11 interrelated organ systems. This is a great review chart of your 11 body systems, the major organs involved and their primary functions. Body fluid compartments, intracellular is the area inside of the cells and extracellular is the area outside of the cells. And that's our kind of first introduction to this physiology course. As you can see, it's a lot of anatomy review um, and we'll start to get into more physiology in the following chapters. So we'll see you later for chapter two.